All right, and we are live. So welcome back to Dapp University. So today we get a lot to talk about in our live stream today. Okay, so we've got a latest report coming in that's showing a strong demand for Web3 developers despite this crypto bear market. It's one of the most common questions I get right now. It's like, hey, what's actually going on with blockchain development demand You know, inside the industry uh, after we've been in this bear market for an entire year? Okay, so I'm actually going to show a report with some actual data here that helps uh, shed some light on these statistics. We're going to look at a lot of other updates that have happened our, since our live stream last week. Again, right now we're doing these live streams once per week on this channel uh, on Mondays about this time, so just subscribe to notifications. You can follow me on Twitter. Uh, You'll find out about those whenever we go live. We're going to answer some of your questions, uh, take a quick look at the crypto markets, and a whole lot more. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to how to master blockchain step-by-step start to finish, land your first blockchain developer job, then definitely head on over to adaptiversity.com forward slash bootcamp you started today. So we got people over in the chat here. we got Dale, technically, uh, David Stone, Mr. Pickle, Venture Warrior, uh, Decibel, uh, Eileen, Fabian, uh, welcome. Automatic Beats, Cryptocology, uh, Above Realty, uh, Chico, welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, so let's jump into this. Let's talk about uh, this latest report that's come out that's talking about what's going on in the Web 3 point industry in terms of developer activity, and also I'm extrapolating that to developer demand itself because, again, one of the most common questions I get right now is like, hey, what's going on with uh, you know, blockchain development itself now that the crypto industry has, you know, kind of had this massive headwind of this bear market we've seen for the past, you know, year or so. Also, you know, sort of the broader uh, economy with, you know, layoffs in the tech industry, all that type of stuff. We've seen, we've seen this type of stuff happen. So uh, I want to bring this up as our first item of discussion today, because again, this is one of the most common questions that I'm getting right now. Um, and also give you an alert that I'm be putting a detailed video on this uh, later this week. So definitely subscribe and turn on notifications for my full thoughts on everything here. But I'm going to give you a, a quick teaser and also some stats from this report that I saw this week that are super uh, beneficial. So Alchemy uh, is an infrastructure company inside of um, uh, Web 3.0. Basically, it's a, it's a company for developers if you're trying to build applications and you want to connect to blockchain services. Alchemy is a great, uh, you know. Uh, person to go to for that specific thing. And they published a report uh, last week, okay, talking about Web3 developers for uh, this quarter of 2022. And so what there's the, essentially the, the takeaway from this report is that Web3 developers are building faster than ever despite market headwinds, all right? And so from this data, I'm actually extrapolating my own insights itself is that that is reflective of actual demand for blockchain development itself because you could draw a few different conclusions from this. This is all just like nerds in their bedroom, <laughs> you know, hacking on their own. Or a significant portion of this is actually people getting paid for this work or creating their own real-world projects because it's reflective of the, de the aggregate demand for web 3.0 technology that actually trickles down to blockchain developers themselves. So... Basically, despite the crypto winter with both Bitcoin and Ethereum down roughly 70% from their November 2021 highs, which the time of the stream is pushing a year now, uh, Web3 developers are more active than ever, than ever, okay, all-time high in terms of developer activity. In fact, 2022 has been the biggest year yet, despite this downturn, okay? So basically, they took a deep dive, some data. Um, they took a lot of research from Etherscan, GitHub, No Package Manager, um, you know, coin market cap, et cetera, et cetera. And then analyzed a lot of this to look at, uh, you know, a couple, couple different data points, looking at like Web3 libraries, like Ethers.js and Web3.js, okay, uh, to see how many like weekly downloads those type of packages have. Uh, monthly verified smart contracts on Etherscan, which I think is actually a pretty good proxy for developer activity because, you know, that's an indicator of who's actually shipping projects out on public blockchains, okay, and actually verifying those projects. Um, and that's up 2.6x year over year. You know, and that trend looks like it's been continuing. Okay. Uh, and they, and they, they talk about their uh, you know, methodology in here. They have an entire slideshow. I won't go through the entire thing in this video. I'll drop a link in the uh, live chat replay here. So if you want to go through all that, you know, question the methodology or just look at the e insights even deeper, you can just check out that link I just dropped in the live chat replay right there. So uh, one thing I want to call out too is looking back at a report that I've analyzed before on my channel um but shows you typically how these trends play out um because this is really common you know, I, I was here in the 2017 2018 2019 phase where we saw this massive run up uh in attention 
uh, and then you know, sort of this long bear market um, in 2018, 2019, that, that was totally different from what we have now, because back then people were like, hey, is crypto still even going to exist? And overwhelmingly now, it's more like, hey, this crypto thing's probably not going away. Just when are, is the attention going to come back, and when's the economy going to get a little bit stronger so we can sort of get, you know, push through this neck wave adoption? And let me let me talk about how that typically, you know, how these crypto cycles tend to um, attract and retain developers and also developer demand. Because again, I would say that entire thing, like there was still significant demand for blockchain development despite a lot of, you know, companies who raised excessive amounts of money with ICOs going out of business basically, right? But here, here's how it tends to happen. Like, and this, this is a report published by Electric Capital that, that analyzes history. And I think this is a pretty good indication of what's happening now and also the future, which basically like when crypto prices boom like crazy, it attracts a ton of new people in the space. Uh, but unlike sort of the fair weather, you know, retail investors who just like lose all their money and go away, like a lot of the development talent that it attracts ends up sticking around. OK, so if you look at this trend of like historic price booms, OK, and then basically you can see that it keeps to continue attract new developers, even as like prices are going down. Now, when you're firmly in a bear, it like sort of levels out. And then when the next wave comes, it like booms again. And so, I mean, this is pretty consistent, you know, with my own personal experience and also my own story. Like, I mean, I got interested in, in Web 3.0 crypto development, blockchain development, uh, because of crypto prices in the first place. Like, well, how, what, you know, this stuff, this price is going up like crazy. What is it? How does it work? Uh, and then as I got, went, went deeper in that rabbit hole, uh, you know, of course, I, you know, am a crypto holder myself, but like way beyond that is like the interest in the technology. And that kind of got me deeper down the rabbit hole. That's, it's, you know, that's what made me stick around and not be somebody who just comes in and buys, you know, when there's a short term price run up and then, you know, sells when <laughs> sell, sells below where I bought in. Right. Because I think the space is worthless. Right. That's what a vast majority of people do. But a lot of the developers who get in, they're actually sticky. They stick around. And uh, because they see the opportunity in the space to push technology forward. And that's like what happens. You know, prices attract people in, prices fall, developer development activity kind of flat lines. Um, you know, in terms of new people coming in, and then when the next boom comes, it attracts more people, and it's a lagging indicator. So, uh, anyways, you know, the, you know, developer activity. If if the demand was actually dying, like it would go down. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but we're seeing we're seeing some pretty consistent, steady. Uh, output even despite prices being down. So I want to share that report with you again. Go check out the video later this week. I'm gonna give you my full thoughts and analysis on this. Answer some lots of your frequently asked questions around this topic because uh, I've been talking to a lot of people lately uh, who are trying to break in the web three point industry, and these are some really common questions. So definitely check that out. So Johnny says you guys foot in the door, and the only crypto dev there. We need a whole team. So if you're looking for more people, Johnny, let us know where that is. Um, I'm sure lots of people are trying to start their journey and would love to know about all their opportunities there where they can also get their foot in the door. So, all right, let's look at a couple other things that uh, popped up in a space since last week that I definitely want to talk about. So um, let's talk about one of the new chains that has hit the scene that's gaining a lot of attention, okay, uh, for better or for worse. All right, so I, make, I made a video about this a while back, profiling it before it launched. But we just had the launch of Aptos, okay, which is, you know, a lot of people are you know, touting as a Solana killer and I guess also by uh, the transitive property of, I guess that would be inequality, uh, uh, Ethereum killer, <laughs> if, Sol if Solana is supposed to be the ETH killer, and then uh, Aptos is supposed to be the Solana killer, then you have you know the top dog who's come onto the scene. So, anyways, uh, I did a video a long time ago when people really first started kind of hyping up Aptos. Uh, you can definitely go check that out. Uh, you know my full thoughts on this, but basically, you know, we've seen some criticism um, in the technical implementation of uh, Aptos as it has hit the main uh, scene, but you know, this is kind of par for the course for new stuff, all right? So I don't necessarily think that this is the long-term um, fate of the actual ecosystem itself. But essentially, just if you want a quick summary, Aptos is a project put together by 
a lot of ex Facebook F ex uh, Meta employees. Uh, basically, we had several in Facebook projects, you know, Libra and DM, that never really saw the light of day, and they kind of continued to evolve into new evolve into new projects with like the move programming language and different implementations for smart contract platforms. Um, and so this this is the kind of branched off a few different efforts. Aptos is one of them. Okay. It's a layer one blockchain smart contract platform like Solana, like Ethereum. It's supposed to, you know, do everything better, faster, cheaper, you know, promise the moon, all that type of stuff. Uh, they raised over $150 million from their uh, Series A rounds, all right, jointly led by uh, FTX and others, okay, like A16Z. So, uh, anyways, they had an airdrop. Uh, they launched... Uh, you know, they t t claiming about 130,000 transactions per second. Um, basically, when they launch, I think the actual, you know, launch was underwhelming compared to people's expectations and what they talked about. And, you know, they they airdropped their token and started trading and started tanking in price really, really fast. <laughs> so it went from like over, like it was basically like $20 uh, down to like $6. Now it also has found uh, a positive trend upward in the short term uh, over the past few days or so. So we'll see what happens there. Again, not financial advice, not telling you to buy any cryptocurrency or sell any cryptocurrency based on this information. All right. But that's uh, sort of the, the latest in the Optos that has, has hit the ecosystem. Uh, of course, you know, you got a lot of people who are sort of fading the, the product launch. Uh, but, you know, time will tell based on the market, you know, what happens here. And one of the reasons there's so much attention on a project like this is because you know, every single time we have another sort of like adoption cycle for crypto. There's always new blockchains you know, that come onto the scene that attract attention uh, with a hot, shiny narrative behind it that looks, that have a rough analogy to a trend that took off in the past. And you have a lot of people that want to get in on those projects early because of the future potential, because those can often be cryptocurrencies that, you know, absolutely explode in price whenever capital attention flow back in the space. And that's one reason it's getting so much. I mean... We saw that with, you know, Solana, uh, others, you know, last major bull cycle. Even before that in 2017, like Bitcoin forks, uh, you know, went crazy <laughs> for short periods of time. Okay. And if we have another, you know, uh, run relatively soon in the grand scheme of things, okay, we could definitely have another, uh, you know, hype cycle around chains like this. So that's why there's a lot of tension. All right. So... Let's look at a couple other things here. Um, so a pretty cool, hold on a second. Let me just find this uh, video just started popping up. Um, so let's talk about some cool stuff that's happening in terms of new use cases for blockchain that we haven't really seen uh, materialized in the past but are starting to see some amount of adoption now. So, uh, you know, I've, I've been talking for a long time about how, you know, we can really disrupt the real estate industry, all right, with blockchain technology, particularly non-fungible tokens. Again, a lot of people think about NFTs as essentially just collectible pictures on a blockchain or maybe using them for like games but there's so many other things we can do with nfts beyond these use cases okay so my intellectual property rights anything any like uh you know fungible asset that requires proof of ownership uh where you can make some of those processes of transferring the ownership and also proving the ownership sort of better faster cheaper uh than the current ways of doing it you know real estate's a prime candidate for that because you know real estate's a pay-to-play system just like finance is okay anytime it's like exp it's talking about expensive assets okay and you know you could easily model the ownership of a home uh with a non-fungible token or nft on a blockchain and reduce the cost of transferring the ownership of that home, uh, of funding that home uh, by using blockchain technology. And I've been talking about this for a long time. Um, and we're starting to see, we've seen projects in the past try to tackle real estate, but here's another really interesting one that's actually happened in the United States. <laughs> okay. So I've, I've said for quite some time now that we'd see it would be a long time before you'd see this really take off in the U.S. because of all the regulations around real estate. Again, the technology is not really the bottleneck uh, for you know moving real estate onto the blockchain. You could basically take the entire U.S. Uh, real estate transaction volume and move it over to uh, the Ethereum mainnet without compromising <laughs> the performance based on how many deals are sold on a daily basis. Okay. Um, 
you know, so the, the technology is not a bottleneck. It's the, it's the regulations and also the incentives to move towards blockchain. Okay. So, but anyways, this has happened in the U.S. So this this is NFT house uh, sold for one hundred and seventy five thousand uh, dollars over the weekend, and it's not just a picture of a house. Okay, holding the NFT gives you ownership of the actual house in South Carolina. And this is the United States. If you don't live in the U.S., uh, the company that made it happen is Roostock, and you can view the traits on OpenSea, so you can actually look at it. Uh, on a popular NFT website like this. So basically, they open an LLC for each property. Now, this is the actual uh, sort of legal implementation behind the scenes, all right? They open an LLC for each property. The LLC takes ownership over the property. They tokenize the property and mint an NFT that represents ownership of the house. And then people can browse the NFT on the marketplace and buy the homes in one click, all right? So that's pretty wild. <laughs> That's pretty pretty wild. If you want to actually see it on OpenSea, I'll, I'll put a link to this in the uh, chat so that you can, you know, read more to that with the links to the relevant content. So, anyways, uh, this is a this is a pretty big deal. Um, you know, <laughs> we'll have to see. This is a situation where they're trying to sort of like outrun, you know, regulation. Uh, I'm not I'm not trying to. I don't really know anything about this company that's doing this. I'll do some more research on a sponsored post. It's not a, a hit page like that. I was just like I'm saying, like, you know, I don't, I don't know if they're like trying to outrun the regulation on this uh, or if they found a good way to solidly stay uh, compliant with regulations or find a way to do this harmoniously. But um, this could be pretty, pretty significant if we could find a way to, you know, actually pull this off where, you know, people who are involved in the transactions don't, are concerned about the finality of these and, you know, potentially the winding up in some legal trouble for doing it this way. Um, because again, you know, real estate's trending towards a completely online process. People are already window shopping for real estate on websites like, you know, uh, Zillow. Okay. But if you could streamline that process where you could just look at a house and be like, yep, I want that one. <laughs> okay. And then you could like, I mean, you could buy it sight unseen with one click. Right. Or if you wanted to view it, you could have, you can easily automate showings, right? Lock boxes on the uh, uh, front doors, okay? You could, you know, have it, you know, with a smart contract if you wanted to, where, you know, you pay for a showing or you you, you have to deposit earnest money before you can go to showing, you know, something like that. I mean, that, that's kind of backwards because you usually don't, you usually don't put earnest money down uh, before you do a showing, right? But that's, that's not the greatest idea. I'm just kind of spitballing ideas off the top of my head, right? But there's all kinds of ways you could like automate this towards a completely online process. And uh, if you could make it to where transferring the ownership of the property is actually final with blockchain, that removes one of the biggest, most expensive pain points of the real estate process. <laughs> okay. And also, if you could get to the point where you could uh, establish financing with like under, uh, well, not with under collateralized lending, because in real estate, you know, the property is the collateral, right? Um, but if you could find a way to, you know, actually introduce financing on chain, uh, this could be a major, major use case for crypto uh, that we're just scratching the surface for. So, um, works with autos also, update the NFT with every service. Yeah, that's a compelling use case for sure. Uh, the one of the biggest reasons I talked about with real estate is because the amount of real estate transactions uh, is going to be much, much smaller than the amount of uh, automobile transactions in the U.S. Um, you know, there's a a, a one-to-many relationship in households per automobiles, and there's a uh, one to one, there's a, there's a, there's a many to one relationship of individuals in a household, uh, to ownership of properties. There's way fewer properties than there are cars, uh, and way fewer unique owners of properties than cars. So here's an actual interesting update on this too. Um, this was today the first real estate property tokenized as an NFT by Roostock is available on chain for home financing. All right, through USDC on Polygon. <laughs> okay, 
So you can go to usdc.homes. Again, it's not a sponsored post. I haven't, I'm not telling you to do this. <laughs> I don't know if this is a credible, reputable project, right? Uh, I'm just saying it's it's out there, okay? So financing your future home on Ethereum. Pretty crazy. Um, and again, that none of this is any open criticism of these projects. What I'm saying is these are just things that are just coming on my radar. I have not done any due diligence to check on them, uh, but they're compelling implementations. Okay, so let's um, take a quick look at the crypto market. Well, actually, before we do the crypto markets, let's look at a couple different exploits that happened over the past week. Uh, you know, it wouldn't be a, an actual week in crypto if we didn't have some juicy hacks to talk about. I know it's not really funny, uh, people losing money. Uh, at some point, you get in the crypto space so long, like some of the stuff's pretty pretty nuts okay and one of the biggest reasons i talk about exploits and hacks on this channel is because we need people uh to help prevent these things and you can be rewarded handsomely uh for this so this last week we saw celo protocol moolah all right loses over 10 million dollars in a market manipulation attack okay 90 percent of three no, sorry over 93 percent of the stolen funds returned to the protocol shortly after the attack all right the developer said so hopefully they were able to you know negotiate with this um, but what happened basically is the second of its kind in the last few weeks with the attackers are manipulating the prices of the tokens all right essentially to borrow against the collateral their positions effectively draining the protocol okay so um, i haven't done a completely deep dive into this uh, if it's anything like the last one where this happened it's most likely an oracle manipulation attack uh, we covered some Oracle manipulation strategies inside the blockchain mastery uh, video vault. So if you're inside there, definitely go check that out if you haven't already. <clears throat> Again, you know, teaching you all about this uh, types of techniques are so that you can recognize them in the wild and prevent them from happening. Basically, by disclosing this, uh, you know, to to the uh, protocols themselves, so they you can be rewarded for that. Uh, ethical disclosure you can do that on, on a platform like immunefy i just made a video on friday about a developer who made two million dollars in a single month <laughs> okay by doing this type of stuff and uh, trust me i kick myself for not finding uh that particular vulnerability myself as well <clears throat> so um we also seen another uh exploit this past week, where crypto wallet BitKeep was hacked for $1 million in BNB uh, and Polygon tokens, okay? So basically, they're going to launch a compensation portal, portal um, which should have launched already, uh, which will reimburse 100% of the funds, okay? Um, they were able to contain the emergency and stop the hacker, which is good, so they mitigated the problem here. Um but if you're if you happened to be, um, you know, affected by this type of thing, uh, you can definitely see that there's a compensation portal here where you can go and try to get some of those funds back. I'm not sure what their plan is. Okay, so you have to check on that. But if you were affected by this, then that's something we'll check on. <clears throat> okay, so um, let's take a quick look at the crypto markets here. All right, so um, 
yeah, let's take a quick look at the crypto markets here. Um, seems like everything's pretty flat, <laughs> okay, since our last stream. Okay, Bitcoin's still hovering just below, you know, $20,000. Uh, Ether's still hovering around 13, sorry, not 13,000. That'd be great if Ether was at $13,000 hovering there. Ether's hovering around $1,300, okay. Um, you know, it, 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 there's nothing really significant about the last seven day trend, <laughs> okay. It's kind of just, it's almost like a round trip. All right. If you, especially if you zoom out on the 14 day, um, you know, there's a little bit of shape to some of this, but it doesn't even really look that significant. It's mostly just flat. Okay. Zoom out in 30 days, mostly just flat. <laughs> like every seven day interval, every seven days ad, every time you zoom out uh, until you get to like the 90 days, you know, spot is, you know, basically just flat. So nothing too exciting in that regard. Now, you know, you have to look back at what the bigger trend is, all right? Um, and thinking about this, because, you know, the million-dollar question for a lot of people on the table is what's going to happen with the broader economy, all right? What's And how does that translate to what's going to happen with crypto? Because the theme of the entire year is, like, don't fight the Fed. Again, why, you know, crypto is not existed in a vacuum by any stretch of the imagination. Um, you know, we've seen... You know, the, the monetary policy by the Central Bank of the United States completely reversed course about a year ago, well, start to about a year ago, okay, in November of 2021. And here we are about a year later, uh, you know, at with, in basically down only mode. So, again, uh, we've seen that same trend in stocks uh, when the two things look alike. Uh, it's either one's influencing the other's total coincidence, or they're influenced by the same thing. And the last one is my bet, of course. Um, again, I don't try to pr try to pretend to be any type of macroeconomics expert, but I just think it's genius to see that inflation is a problem, that the Fed is actively trying to fight this uh, by tightening monetary policy. At least that's what they say, and that's what their actions also match, and that's what we're seeing you know, turn into so much pain in the markets. So, uh, but really the big question is what's going to happen with the overall trend, All right, When is down going to stop, <laughs> okay? And when could we start to see uh, things recover? Now, yeah, I'm not going to do too much forecasting on what is going to happen uh, in the broader economy because I'm not trying to do that. Uh, and I don't do a lot of technical analysis on this channel because uh, I don't think it's always that useful. But when you're talking about long-term, big long-term trends and changes, I do want to point out the fact that, um, you know, we're starting to see, uh, you know, at least Bitcoin and other cryptos that are highly correlated to Bitcoin um, at a sort of critical moment. All right. So if you, um, you know, if you kind of zoom out on these longer time frames, and we look at, you know, essentially, um, uh, the trends themselves. Okay. If we're able to essentially, you know, what, what I'm starting to see right now is that some of these this downward trajectory is at least starting to slow down. And we're at this critical point where things tend to either resolve to the downside, resolve to the upside, okay, um, and could potentially establish a new upward trend uh, in terms of, you know, its actual price based on the technicals on the table. So, again, I don't put a ton of stock and trade into technical analysis. You know, you have to – it has to line up with the fundamentals. It has to line up with so many other things. Um, but, you know, I always think about these markets in terms of probability, okay, and just based on the, the simple technicals on the table, okay, the probability that we could at least slow the uh, carnage that we've been – in all right the probability of that has gone up and the probability that crypto has bottomed and could establish a long-term uptrend not saying a swift race back to all-time highs and beyond but at least a new uptrend the likelihood of that has increased based on the technicals okay so uh, i mean you know also from sort of the broader um economic um you know way of looking at things you know, just in my opinion, all right, this is not something to take to the bank, okay, but the likelihood that we're closer to the bottom uh, and, you know, in the very least close to the bottom, if not have already made a bottom, is much higher, um, you know, based on, you know, what what could potentially happen from this point. We've got U.S. election coming up that, of course, could be part of it. Um, I mean, we've already, you know, 
we've already raised rates like significantly. And that rate of change, I think, is what's been a big factor in, you know, disrupting the economy, disrupting, you know, crypto itself. Um, and I, I don't see a world where we continue the rate of change that we've been at for the past year uh, much, 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 much longer. OK, um, you know, could we start to slow down and, and stay at these similar levels in terms of rates uh, for some time and start to see, uh, you know, the economy, the stock market, crypto start to, you know, make positive trends upward despite not being at the same low rates we were before? I think that's very possible. But, you know, the likelihood that we're just going to continue, <laughs> you know, doubling, tripling interest rates in short periods of time, uh, my opinion, is low. Uh, the, the crypto technicals are starting to look somewhat favorable, like they could be the odds are on the table that we could start to see a new uptrend uh, established. Now, all of the things, the, the probability is starting to stack more in the favor of, um, you know, the worst being behind us. But we'll have to wait and see. Again, it's not any type of financial advice. I, you know, nobody's got a crystal ball to know exactly what's going to happen in the future, but that's just my, you know, loose take on things. Another Another data point to look at this uh, with is what's actually happening in terms of people's appetite for risk, okay? So uh, that's a pretty good, like a pretty good proxy for that is like seeing what's happening with new projects and like altcoins, okay? So before I was talking about like Aptos, okay? Uh, of course, Aptos tanked <laughs> the first day or so of trading, but, you know, we started to see <clears throat> it actually somewhat appreciate in price, Okay, after that, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So that is a pro that's a small proxy for people's risk appetite. <clears throat> I don't just mean that project itself. Um, let's just zero. I can't find the price chart off the top of my head. Hold on, head, hold on a second. So uh, another uh, other proxy for this are, are the altcoins um, that have you know started to perform like crazy, like the Doge chain coin. Okay, which is you know uh, you can't get much riskier than that, in my opinion. Um, you know, has tripled in the past seven days. We've seen other smaller altcoin projects, you know, do the same. So that's also a pretty good proxy bull's appetite to, uh, you know, pursue risk. Okay. Uh, also, just another data point is the amount of time we've been from the top is significant. I mean, we're pushing a year at this point, another data point to look at. So, um, you know, my my bet is that the odds are much higher that we're closer to the bottom than not uh, that it very well could be in the rearview mirror, uh, but you know, time will tell. Somebody says, Show some love, smash the like button. Yeah, definitely smash the like button, really helps his videos out. <clears throat> Somebody says, is it necessary to learn complete Web 2.0 full stack development before learning Web 3.0? Absolutely not. If you want to learn Web 3.0, start with Web 3.0. Learn everything else as you go. You can find my full explanation of that on my YouTube homepage with a video talking about how to become a blockchain developer in 2022. And we're getting pretty close to the time where I need to update that video on how to become a blockchain developer for 2023. So definitely subscribe. Turn notifications, you're gonna find it that whenever it goes live. So great stream, everybody, today. As always, smash the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Um, you know, if you want to get started down this path about exactly everything I'm talking about today, uh, how can you do that? You can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find those free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. Um, if you like those, you went to the next step, or hey, maybe you'll take a massive shortcut entirely, land your first blockchain developer job, then I can show you how to do that over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You know, you have to be an expert to get started today. Help people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching.